go back a little bit, after that we look at the 1961 World Championship match, game number 11 between Mikhail Botvinnik, and uh, they call him Chess Encyclopedia because he was so knowledgeable about the game and there are pictures of him, funny pictures, like cartoons, he had like books always with him, like carrying three, four books. So, and his opponent is a, a very different player, Mikhail Tal, player who was a world champion for a very short amount of time, but he was very uh, sacrificial, a lot of uh, fancy attacks, brilliant ideas, but usually for this kind of players, it's very hard to remain at the very top. So it was uh, good that he won and become a world champion because there are a lot of great, great players who maybe had a chance or two to become a champion and didn't take it and then uh, they not remembered very well. So in chess, usually if you're a world champion, you are remembered uh, really well. I mean, there, there are some exceptions. We have like Paul Kerry, so people know, and David Bronstein, a lot of top players who won, but uh, usually world champions, they are remembered uh, uh, for a very long time. So here, in this game, it's uh, Botvinnik is playing with white against Tal. D4, knight f6. C4, now C6. This is a pretty rare way of playing a Slav defense, but I think he was uh, trying to see whether or not C4 would be played. So he was trying to see if the C4 would be played and then he played the Slav. So he was trying to see if maybe something else will happen. So, but now we see it's gonna be a Slav defense. So Knight C3, D5, Knight so, by a little strange move order, we have transposed into the Slav defense. And here, he decided to, uh, now he decided to play what I play as well, exchange variation. So he took back on d5, pawn takes back. See, even at the world championship level in 1961, they played these openings because they thought there's something they can find. The, each player had a team of uh, uh, people who analyze the theory, so they thought they can find something perhaps. So knight f3, knight c6, bishop f4, bishop f5. One of the main lines, and it looks like they're just copying each other for the first couple of moves, but that will change e3 e6 i like the move queen b3 here that's my favorite move here the move queen b3 to put pressure on b7 but he played the move bishop b5 he tried another move to pin it bishop b4 they continue but now it's going to stop and now white to play i want to give you a chance to play like Botvinnik. Couple of ideas here you have. You can of course castle, you can do some other things, but what do you think he played here? He's looking to get some small advantage and try to, you know, squeeze Tal and win this game. So Tal was very good in dynamic positions. So here, by doing this exchange violation, he takes away that dynamic play and basically kind of forces Tal to go into some quiet, boring position to play. Yeah, no, you don't want to play knight h4 right now. You only want to play knight h4 if you have a way of force winning the bishop. If the queens are off the board, that's a kind of a thematic idea. You can do that, but uh, here, not quite. So, any other suggestions? Yes? Knight e5. Like I mentioned in the previous lecture, knight belongs where? In the center, right? In the center, and there's clear you want to do that. Activating your knight and putting pressure. Very good. Now, Tal, of course, playing very active again. Queen to a5. Activating, threatening to take the light square bishop, putting pressure on c3 now. Question is, what to do? 
castle. That's a possibility. But he decided to take the knight with a check, create a weak pawn, and then go for safety. Remember, safety of the king is your number one priority when you play chess. Okay? So that's your number one priority. So remember that, to castle. Now, after we castle, the c6 is hanging, so he decided to take on c3. Pawn takes c3. And now just queen takes c3. Black is up a pawn, but his king is stuck in the middle of the board. But do we have a way, do we have some, some idea perhaps to keep the king there for a while? What do you think? That's a possibility, but after you play rook c1, he just goes here. And your pawn is weak again on a2 now. Very special move needed here. Very, very special play I want from you here. Queen a4, excellent suggestion. Um, very good looking move, yeah, but he did not play that. He did not want to do that. He, not sure why he didn't play queen uh, a4. It looks absolutely uh, fine. But I can only think that maybe he didn't want to deal with queen c2 or something like that. OK? okay so Castle right next to the queen. You want to put it here? No, no, the other one. Here? No, the, uh, the castle, the castle, that one, next to the queen. Put it here? I, I'll put it in check, right? Because she's going to Well, we want to attack the queen here. Mm -hmm. Well, let's um, try to <coughs> exchange the queens, maybe. Yes, queen c1, excellent. That's what he played, because now you force the exchange. Take. Well, yeah, we don't, we, don't, we don't want to move a rook here because we want to, yeah, if we move the rook here, it doesn't really do anything. So that's why, uh, like, it's kind of locked. So, but queen c1, after we take, now our rook is in the game, okay? <coughs> so, castle. Now, excellent move by Batvenik. See, it looks like he can just take the pawn on c6. But he's not in a hurry to do that. h3, luft, yeah, it's a luft, but it's a, he does a little better luft that helps him to control some more squares. Excellent suggestion. That's what Botvinnik did, f3. Getting a luft, possibilities to push, and control, control the squares, right? Excellent. Okay. H6. And now, G4. not yet, not yet. Let's get the material back because we don't want to play down a pawn, yeah? So take the pawn back, knight c6. Rook f e8. Now, I want you to spend two, three minutes, everyone here, and try to give me the proper evaluation of this position. What is the proper evaluation here? It looks kind of equal, no? Yeah, well, 
same amount of material, very similar structure. So give me an idea why is white, uh, first of all, do you think white is better here? Who thinks white is better? Okay, reasons. Um, I like the uh, dark square control on the queen side in mm. combination with that knight on c6 and the control over the c file. Yeah, I don't see what black squares are doing. Okay, that's I'm true. Advantage, yeah, we are mainly better here because we have a more active knight here, okay? And our bishop is, I mean, his bishop is doing a pretty decent job as well. But uh, our knight is the main reason we are better here. The knight is more active, okay? And it's already targeting this pawn. Uh, but who can find what Botvinnik played here? He had a nice long-term plan, you know? And this move makes ton of ton of sense here. You know? it's, just, it's a very clear what he's trying to do here. He is trying to win the A pawn and win this game. And you will see that he accomplished that. But you, take, you need to do certain steps for that to happen, because you're not going to be able to do that like that. Ben. Ben. Look at my light square bishop. Look at my light square bishop. See it now? That's not so simple. Yes, if we had rook p1, rook p7, then it would have been simple. That's not possible, but he wants to do something. How about that A4 to fix that now? Bravo. Bravo. That is Botvinnik move right there. Because you're pushing your pawn. So when you win his pawn, your pawn is closer to queen. And most importantly, look at these ideas. Because that's where you want your rook. Rooks belong where in the endgame? Seventh rank. And that's what he's accomplishing. That's Botvinnik play right there, A4. Uh, rooks belong on the seventh rank. Rooks. Uh, good a good place for the rook, yeah? That's seventh rank. Okay, now he goes here. Knight d7. And now strong move here, again by Batvinik, to squeeze. He wants that bishop. Bishop wants to get more active, no? You want bishop active, no? How about d6 now? Of course, bishop d6 comes in. Now you want to check and take the bishop. Damage the structure, OK? Damaged it. Now he goes knight b6. He wants to plant his knight here. And that could be a problem, because we're not going to be able to remove him. So we want to win some material before that happens, OK? Before that happens, we want to try to somehow snatch some material now. Bishop d6 had a deep idea behind it. He didn't just play the move. There was an idea behind it. And you will see it now. Excellent. When you choose a plan, you stick with it, right? The a7 pawn is weak, and you stick with that plan. Now you cannot move your knight away because you're going to lose the pawn. He's putting serious pressure on it now. Bishop d3. Black is trying to activate his own bishop. If you push the pawn, he's going to crawl back on c8 and try to defend somehow. So he's going to try to go back on c8 and try to defend. Something better you have, something stronger here. Tactics. Yes, Claudio. Knight takes a7, excellent tactic. Sacrificing the knight, he takes back, we take the knight. And now you have a strong pawn here, and this is called past pawn. Outside past pawn, actually. Past pawn, yes. Now, he goes here, and this past pawn now advances and strengthens the position of that bishop. But Tal had an idea. He thought maybe he can hold this. Not easy to win this. How are you going to win this? It's locked. It's opposite color bishops, and it's locked. Now, but master of endgames, Botvinnik, 
found the gap, you know, in the position, and convert this very convincingly, actually, very convincingly. Bishop, you mean here? Mm -hmm. That's c7. Uh, but let's say he will bring the rook over. Let's see. <laughs> this, this, this. Uh -huh. Takes. <laughs> Check. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well, let's uh, don't rush. Yes, that's the long term plan here, but. Uh, what Batvinik likes to do, he likes to get the rook into the game first. So he goes here up. E4, it's his plan. It's not going to run away. Then he plays E4, King F7. Now, now when you play chess in end games, King belongs where in the end game? Middle. In the middle, right? Look what he does. He brings it in, you know, like a piece. He brings it in, you know, and this is very important. Rook A8. King e3, now he says my king, he wants the king to be participant as well. Now, rook eb8, now, do you see now what is he threatening after he plays this move? I should see more hands by now. What is black threatening? In the back? Let's say you play the poor move here, b6, look at the tactic. Takes your bishop. You take back. Lose your rook with the check. And then guess what? Lose the pawn as well afterwards. See, you can play a good game here, but one inaccurate play, one, you know, one moment of not focus, and you're going to lose this game. And that's what chess is all about. Focus, focus, focus. You have to focus for the entire game here, otherwise, you're not going to be able to play a good game and win because you will make a mistake. So you must focus. Now, so how do we avoid this tactical threat? Rook, rook AC3, correct? Now rook C8. Because in some point your position is so good you might even sacrifice the exchange here because you might have dominating position. So he stops that. I'm very impressed the way that he cracked this position because this position is not easy to win. I'm telling you, even GM versus GM matchups, a lot of GMs are not going to be able to win this. This is not an easy position to win at a very high level because yes, you have an extra pawn, yes, you have a great bishop, rooks are fine, but plan. You need a plan here. It's, uh, it's not obvious at all here how you're going to win this. So how? This is the, the plan. You need to create a second weakness, okay? You have that one pawn there, but there is no weakness anymore in a black's position. So you want to create a weakness, okay? <sighs> Let's not rush. Let's not rush, okay? We don't want to weaken our light squares by pushing the F pawn because he will play F5 also and in general you don't want to weaken your light squares if you don't have a light square bishop. What, what kind of bishop? Light square bishop. Light square. Yeah, so more pawns you put on a dark squares, that means you're weakening your light squares. So who can find Botvinnik's plan here? I need a plan. I, I don't need the move. I need a, I need a plan from you here. Uh, go, go where? King side? Excellent. Excellent thinking again. Brian, very impressive. Excellent. 
Now, he starts with g4 first, okay? That gains space. Very strong g4 push, rook a b1, and h4, look at that, gaining space. The concept is to gain some space that will be very useful later in the game. So as you can see, uh, he has no, black cannot do much, so he just shuffles around. He goes fixing it, okay, on h5. Now he goes here. What is the plan now, though? He is resilient. He is resilient, yes. Why can't play a G5 before? Who? Black. Who? Black play G5? Yeah, black play G5. Why can't he play black G5? Why can't he play black G5? Where? Here? Yeah, yeah. H G5, I play H H5. Your H6 pawn will be weak forever. And in a lot of positions, you will drop this pawn, OK? So this, you don't want to avoid, because this pawn is very weak, OK? So later, I mean, I don't have an immediate win here to show you, but this, this is a very weak pawn. That's why. Your king can never go away, because my bishop is going to boom, boom, take your pawn. This is a very weak pawn now, OK? I can probably even win without rooks now, because my king will go there. And uh, your king cannot go, because I have this pawn. I mean, just, just an idea, OK? So that's why, I mean, this, this is not bad for black. This is, I mean, it's not so easy to win this. Like, again, I'm not, I'm not saying it's immediate win here. It's, it's tricky. Now, what to do here? F4, G5, too many exchanges, Claudio. Too many exchanges there. Something better. And plus, uh, Claudio, f4, I, I take your pawn? No, I mean, maybe exchanging on d5 first. Yeah, but then bishop d5, I don't know. Or so even pawn take d5. Not so. Don't want to exchange now. I want more space from you, more space advantage. When you say space advantage, what are you talking about? Uh, what does that mean? That means advancing your pawns into opponent's territory controlling the squares that he is supposed to control. Excellent. See? This is his side of the board. You're coming in into his territory. And you're grabbing squares. That's called gaining space advantage, OK? Space. It's very important. Now, if he takes, you take back with a pawn. Then your king can sit very nicely here. And then you can have a 4, a 5 plan. I like this move. So he played g6. Black doesn't want to just get uh, you know, uh, completely squeezed, so he wants to break open. I don't know if this is a good move or not, but that's what he played. So takes, takes, now he goes here. Rook 3, c2, fe, fe, rook h8. Now he's anticipating some problems here, and now need to put pressure on h6, OK? He wants to put pressure. That's why he brought the rook on c2, to be able to put pressure. Very clear thinking, yes. Rook h2, rook cc8. Now, not yet, not yet. Your king needs to be improved a little bit. He played d2, actually, because he wants to have this, access. Access for the bishop, OK? Don't block the access. Bishop d2 now. I don't know what Mikhail Tal did. I mean, I'm not sure. I think he played an inaccurate move here. And he was just, but his position is bad here. But I think what he did is just kind of expedited the process here, because he, for some reason, moved the bishop. When you move the bishop, who is protecting this guy now? Nobody. Nobody. Run. Get closer to the queen. Run. Now he went back here. This didn't, I, I didn't understand this. I think this was just like he got tired and just blundered or something because he just allowed the opponent to have a pawn on a seven rank. Maybe he was hoping to sacrifice his exchange or something. So rook h7. Rook over, rook a8, stopping it. And now, 
This is the target. What are you going to do to the target? Bishop h6, put a pressure on it. Excellent, by Botvinnik. Now, bishop e3, putting pressure on this, and now he can double it up and cleanly take the pawn. Okay, Tal didn't resign. He played a couple of more moves, so, but check. Rook h1, rook b2, check. I think he either flagged or resigned here, but after king c1, he is completely lost here. So if it goes back here, check. If it goes back rank, then it's a check, picking up the rook. And if it comes here, you see the checkmate? Bam. Excellent. So that's the game, OK? Botvinnik, Mikhail Botvinnik versus Mikhail Tal. 1961, As this was a 24th World Championship match. And uh, game number 11 for him. Yeah. Uh, so Botvinnik won this game, and uh, I think it was pretty convincing in this match as well. All right. Uh, any questions you have about this game? This was a Slav defense opening exchange variation. OK, what we'll do now is the remaining little time we have left, we're going to do a couple of difficult end game studies and see how good you are in solving these endgame studies. Let's see. Why to play and win? Down a queen, you win this. Very difficult endgame study to find. You have to go really deep in this position to find the solution. White starts and, find, and wins this game. I don't use engines to solve this, but I, I, I think the current engines will probably solve this quickly because they're just so powerful. Excellent, correct. I'm taking you home with me, Okay, Ben sold it, guys. Okay, he knew this. <laughs> he knew this one. <laughs> okay, don't show the answer. Let everybody to do it. Okay, we have to find the first move here. Okay, it's got to be a check. That's good logic right there. Yes, it's got to be a check. How many checks you see here? Not too many, right? Knight to a5 check. Yeah. Now, if he goes here. OK, so then oh, then I can bishop to uh, yeah, c5 check. Bravo. Check, yeah, and then we are. Bravo, but this is, I played not good for black, that's why. Now I go here. This is the real stuff now. Now. I want to force it back over there to the D5. This is where you need to play brilliant, OK? You need to play extraordinary now. It needs to be something extraordinary here. We need something extraordinary here, not something regular. We should need to check King D3. And he's escaping from danger. He's escaping from the danger, see? The danger is on the king side, uh, the queen side here. This is the danger area, right here. Well, it goes king to d3, then red to d4 check. Takes a rook, knight to d6, works between the king. Which move, sorry? If you go to d3, rook to d4 check. No, d2 check, king to d3, rook to d4 check, king takes rook, knight to d6. I know, but he goes king e2. Yeah, that's that's a good good call. Uh, you know, he, uh, Brian was saying check, check. I'm oh, sorry, check. Uh, this is beautiful. Yes, but unfortunately, he escapes here and 
and then it gets away. He's out of the danger. OK. So here, brilliant move needed here. Double exclamation mark here, your move. Imagine it's double exclam here. Check. But I go here. You're, you're, you're pushing me from the danger zone, you know? You're pushing me away from the danger zone here. Okay, rook d4 now, I take your bishop. Uh, when? Calculate, calculate. Calculate, Claudio, calculate. Excellent plan by uh, Claudio. Check. If he takes, what do you do? Look at that one. Look at that skewer, huh? What a skewer, huh? Nice. Look at that skewer. He cannot go to this square to protect the queen, so he has to step away to snap it off. How many people in this room know how to win this position? <laughs> okay. Okay, one day, one of these days while I'm here, we'll work on this. This is a pretty, this will take a whole lesson, okay? But this is a really good uh, end game. If we have some end game lecture time, we'll do that, okay? This is the, you know, you will, I will I'll show you how to master this. And if it takes with this, obviously, fork wins this. But, Claudio, did you look at this move? Ah, gotta check everything, remember? Everything. Checkmate? Oh, no, no, sorry. Claudio. <laughs> Absolutely, you should continue from here on. Correct. He takes. Of course, same idea, guys. Same idea. You forgot? Ah, yeah, yeah. Check. And we obtain this position. Excellent. Now, let's do it again so everybody here will remember this. Okay, we'll, we'll do it again. You will see it now. Okay, who wants to go? Okay, Benjamin, first move. This leads to a mate, right? Now, what's the move? Yes? Brilliant move. Brilliancy. He takes. Check. Wins it. So he goes queen g8. He's trying to be resilient, you know. Resilient. Now, what are you going to do? Rook b3 check. He takes. Bishop d2 check. And now king has to go away. And we take the queen, and knight and a bishop is a win. Okay, very good, everyone. So we covered the 1961 Botvinnik versus Tal, a nice endgame win in a Slav exchange violation by Botvinnik, and uh, this was a very important, nice win for him. I really like where, you know, from almost equal position, he managed to squeeze, improve his pieces, and find a nice win. And at the end of the class, you had a very difficult study. So more coming up next week, okay, for you.